Tuesday, October 29th, 2019, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. This morning, I want to talk about the bond market, how bonds work, the mechanism of uh, the bond market, prices, a coupon, the yield, uh, what happens to the yield when price goes up or down. Uh, a lot of people have asked me about that. Uh, it, it's complicated for the layperson out there uh, when they listen to the news about bonds. Uh, but it's very simple. Of course, my background is uh, in banking and in the bond market. I remember when I lived in Switzerland, uh, just after I finished university, one of my father's friends, uh, he had a friend who was in banking. He uh, quite high up. I was still looking for a job. He uh, took the time to uh, meet with me. I, I went to his office uh, in a nice room and everything, and he talked about bonds for me. And one of the things he said to me is, as the price goes up, the yield uh, uh, goes down. And as the price go, goes down, the yield goes up. That's one of the, the rules. Before I, I go further, though, I think it's important to look at the, the basics. Uh, but so let's look at the word bond, what what it means, right? Uh, first of all, uh, and uh, I'm taking my uh, old Merriam-Webster dictionary here. It used to be my dad's. It's from the 70s. It's uh, in, not in great shape, but it's still there. So it says uh, bond, an agreement or obligation often made binding by a pledge of money or goods. So there you go. Uh, even in um, other languages, for it, of course, in French, uh, a bond is called an obligation, right? So that, that's what it means. It's just a pledge that uh, you're going to lend someone money and they're going to pay you back uh, in one year, two years, five years, ten years. That's the maturity of the loan, right? Quite simple. And uh, they, they, you will set a coupon or an interest rate, right? Let's say uh, Mr. Smith is going to lend me uh, 100 pounds for one year at 5% uh, uh, coupon or interest per year. So in a year's time, I have to pay him back 105. So what about the yield? What's that? Well, um, the yield is just uh, the price in the secondary market. So what's the secondary market? Uh, let me give you an example that will make it simple for you. Let's say you borrowed a hundred uh, pounds or a hundred dollars uh, or even a thousand. Uh, the hundred uh, is usually called the par value of the bond, the hundred percent of the bond. So you could borrow ten thousand dollars and uh, the par price is a hundred. You borrow it at five percent, right? So Mr. Smith uh, decides to um, he sees you, uh, how you're living, right? You're taking a lot of holidays, you buy new cars, uh, and he's concerned that you're not going to pay him back. So he goes to uh, Mr. Jones and says, uh, explains him what he did. He lent you ten thousand uh, dollars for, let's say, five years, right? And uh, you explain the situation. <laughs> what? Mr. Ineco is doing with his life. And uh, Ms. Mr. Jones says, well, I'll take that loan, but uh, I'll, I'll only give you uh, 95 uh, value. Uh, I'm not going to pay you 10,000 for it, right? So what does that do to the coupon? Well, the coupon's still the same, but Mr. Jones is going to earn that 5% over a smaller amount. So the yield goes up, right? So that's how it works. Uh, so when the, the bond is issued in the primary market, let's say uh, there's also different kind of borrowers, right? There are government borrowers like the U.S. Treasury. There are corporate borrowers like Microsoft. Uh, there's um, agency borrowers like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Uh, there are mortgage borrowers, right? Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac agency uh, that's in, included in there. What else? There are uh, state borrowers like state of California, a municipal, a county. Uh, there's all kinds of borrowers. That hence the different names. 
and the market attaches uh, different risk risks to these borrowers, right? Depending on how their fiscal situation is. And uh, the other thing about bonds is that uh, the longer the maturity, the more volatile the price, right? That's called the duration. So why is that? Well, because if you lend someone uh, money for a day, uh, maybe after 12 hours, you kind of uh, need the money. So you sell the, uh, the bond or obligation to someone else. But uh, he's probably going to pay you the whole thing because there's not much risk, right? But if it's a 100-year <laughs> loan, uh, yeah, he's going to say uh, or she, oh, I'm, I'll pay you 70% uh, uh, or of the, the 100 value, right? If it's a 10-year, you will say, oh, I'll pay you 80. So that's how it works, uh, the bond market. And what about the yield curve? What's the yield curve? Well, the yield curve uh, shows you uh, how different maturities within the market uh, are yielding, right? That's all it is. So the U.S. Treasury yield curve is basically a compilation of yields of different maturities from one month T-bill, uh, three month, six month, one year, two year, 10 year, right? And uh, if the yield curve inverts, it means that uh, there's something wrong out there, right? And that's why people talk about being a recession because they're not, they, they basically think that uh, there's more danger uh, in the short term in the economy. Uh, so yields still still stay pretty high, but in the longer term, they think uh, things are going to slow down. So yields go down, right? That's why you get the yield curve inverting. Normally, though, the yield curve is upward sloping. What about what affects bond prices? Well, there's the uh, risk, right? Uh, counterparty risk that the, the borrower uh, is not in great shape. The borrower is overspending, right? Like I explained. Uh, there is uh, inflation risk in the whole economy. Uh, if inflation accelerates, people who lend money want more uh, for their money, right? Because it means the money is losing value. So if inflation accelerates, bond prices in the secondary market will go down and that will drive up yields. Uh, that's the thing to understand. The coupon never changes. But the yield changes, right? Because the price fluctuates in the secondary market. But for example, if you buy a five-year treasury uh, note uh, for par, let's say you buy it on the day that uh, the treasury issues uh, that five-year and you get 2% yield on it. I know it's a lot lower now, but let's say you get 2% yield. If you hold... And you pay a hundred for that, right? Let's say you borrow a hundred dollars, make it easier. You pay a hundred dollars for that, and you you hold it until maturity. You're gonna get your hundred dollars back, plus you have gotten uh, all the uh, coupon payments. And that that's the other thing about uh, uh, bonds. They also have very different uh, uh, characteristics depending on the issuer, depending on the country. Uh, for example, U.S. Treasuries, uh, they pay uh, their coupons semi-annually. Uh, bonds, German government bonds, they pay their interest annually. So it actually makes a little difference to the yield when you calculate the price. But that's all done now through uh, computers, uh, through your Bloomberg terminal. But I remember when I started out, I went to a bond market workshop back in 1990. And I still, and I kept this uh, thing that they gave us there. Uh, and it's got a little uh, grid here uh, to calculate uh, the yield, uh, annual to semi-annual. There's a lot of different things about bonds. There are bonds that are callable. Uh, what does that mean? Well, that means the issuer can pay it back, pay back the bond before the maturity. Uh, the price on that uh, bond uh, might... Uh, trade or move differently than a bond that's not callable right there's also floating rate bonds what are floating rate bonds well these are bonds where the uh the coupon will be adjusted to the uh, market rate every six months or three months or 12 months so in a uh 
environment, a bearish environment for bond prices or rising interest rates. Having floating rate uh, bonds is a good thing because uh, you're going to be, uh, your income is going to be adjusted higher, right? So there's all kinds of uh, bonds. Uh, what, what are junk bonds? Well, junk bonds are basically uh, bonds that uh, yield a lot more or uh, the issuer has to pay a lot more in interest uh, because they're not very uh, reliable. Uh, they're not a great uh, credit, right? That's what it, credit. So are there any books I recommend uh, about the bond markets? Uh, there is one. If you're really going to get into bonds and if you really want to become um, knowledgeable about bonds, there is what's called the Bible of the bonds, uh, of the bond market, and it's called the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities. So you see that they even call it fixed income securities because that's what it is, unless, of course, it's a floating rate bond, but generally uh, they're all fixed. So there's the book there. It's quite thick. I've got the hardback. It's by uh, Frank Fabosi and Dessa Fabosi. This is like uh, the uh, book to have. And I bought this in 1995, so it's quite old, but it's in very good condition, of course. I've looked on Amazon. It goes for like $120 or so. It's quite valuable. Uh, I don't think I paid that much back then. So uh, there you go. Uh, hopefully that helped. I will do some more uh, videos about the bond market um, to sum up. Basically, uh, there's a few things you need to know that are important. Uh, there's uh, the primary market. What does that mean? That's when the issuer uh, issues the bonds into the market, right? At par, at a coupon, at a fixed coupon, and at a fixed maturity. And then the next day, that bond would start trading in the secondary market. And uh, if things change, things like the fiscal situation of the company, inflation, uh, corporate risk, right? Political risk, they all affect the price of bonds. Of course, uh, this is a different story now. Uh, the uh, central banks uh, have completely destroyed the bond market, right? We saw in 2011-12, Italian uh, uh, government bonds, Irish government bonds, Greek government bonds, Spanish government bonds, they all collapsed in price. Their yields rose up to like 7 8%. And if it wasn't for the ECB intervening and printing, <laughs> creating even more debt to buy those bonds, uh, their yields would have gone a lot higher. Right now, I, I think uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, the 10-year Greek uh, government bond yields about the same as the US or maybe even less. So that's the bond market there. Let's finish off, quickly look at the markets this morning. It's 7.41 a.m. London. Gold and silver didn't perform very well yesterday. We, we, we saw the S&P make new all-time highs. Uh, the um, Dow hasn't made an all-time high though, so we have to keep that in mind. What was that on the back of? More, more good news about the trade deal, right? Uh, expectation that the Fed will cut rates. So it's pretty perverse, in my opinion, that uh, the stock market is at all-time highs. Unemployment is supposedly so low. The U.S. economy is doing great. Even Donald Trump tweeted yesterday uh, about the S&P making an all-time high, saying, enjoy, right? Uh, so why does the Fed need to cut rates if everything is great, right? Everything isn't great. Uh, it isn't. Repo market still under, uh, how can I say, uh, under threat. <laughs> uh, Fed's having to intervene. Started QE again. How, how can things be great? I just keep that in mind. So right now, spot gold is $14.93, up just under a dollar. Range has been $14.90 to $14.94. Fairly quiet. Silver's down two cents. Range has been for 1771 to 1789. <coughs> the Dow futures up 10 uh, at 27,096. SP unchanged, 3039. 
NASDAQ 100 future down six at 8102. Uh, Sterling is down a, uh, less than 0.1 of a percent, 128.52. Euro is at 110.89, so back below 111 here, a little drifted down. And the dollar is unchanged against the yen, 108.92. Dollars down 0.15 of a percent against the yuan at 705.33. WTI crude is down two thirds of a percent at 55.45, and Brent is down uh, just over half a percent at 60.92. So now let's see where uh, the bond markets are. The 10 year yield is down one and a half basis point at 184, uh, and the two year note is. Uh, at 165. Yeah, yields have been going up, mainly because there's more uh, confidence in the financial system for now. Uh, we're seeing stock market make new highs, so there's probably money flowing out of bonds into the stock market. Uh, the problem is, I think investors are being fooled about conditions, economic conditions, and financial conditions. So this might not really help uh, the fact that yields are going up and the bond prices are going down. So we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the uh, primer on bonds. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, just comment below in the comment section. I'll try to answer them as best as possible. And uh, of course, I, I can't answer every question. I'll try my best though. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, Think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet. Make sure you also hit that little notification bell above to be notified of all my new videos. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Steemit, and on DTube. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.